Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp back again for another episode of Wake Up Legendary. As you can see, I'm on my phone this morning. Once again, I was on my phone yesterday as well, sitting right here in my office. Internet's just a little bit choppy, so I'm going to make it work and use my uh, arm as a tripod. Um, or I might set it down or, you know, set it over here, or lean it up against my coffee. We'll, we'll figure it out. But I've got a fantastic guest, a 19-year-old um, who's currently um, – uh, attending community college and uh, is taking some business related courses and is also doing some business related things. Sylvia, welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. What's up? How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. So how's it feel to be in college for some business related stuff and also be out here actually operating your own digital business kind of a kind of a cool thing in my perspective yeah so actually i'm in my second semester of college right now my last semester i was majoring in nutrition and dietetics so i didn't start out taking business courses but then i felt like i was wasting a lot of my time yeah. um and that's when in my second semester i switched to i'm not necessarily business um, but I am just taking business related classes so that maybe they can help me improve my affiliate marketing business. So that's the whole purpose of me taking the business yeah. classes. And I think it's been, I, it's been really useful. I've been learning more about marketing and about how to run a business and like the different aspects of how to run a business. So it's yeah. felt a little more like worth my time and money. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're making getting the most bang for your buck now, realizing that you're possibly going to want to be an entrepreneur, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So how did you find us? And were you looking specifically for something to do on the internet? Yeah, so... <laughs> Business related. Yes. Yeah, so back in like the summer of 2022, I was delivery driving, like, anywhere from six to eight hours a day. Um, and I was about to start college. It was right around the corner. Um, I was burnt out like mentally, physically, and financially. Like the most I was making in a month was $2,000 from delivery driving. Obviously that's not sustainable by any means. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I need to at least find a way to earn extra income. I was looking for a side hustle. Like that was my intention, looking for some type of side hustle I can do in my free time. Um, yeah. Something that could make me passive income. So um, then I started looking online. I looked at drop shipping and Amazon FBA and the stock market and day trading and all of that. I looked at all of it. Um, and then I seen a girl, one of your guys' affiliates talking about affiliate marketing. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Um, it took me a few weeks to actually get into the challenge, but I reached out to her. I messaged her. I asked her questions. I was like, you know, what are you talking about? What is this? Can you tell me more? She told me about the challenge and I was intrigued. Like I was a little skeptical as we all were, but I just made sure to ask her questions and she told me about the challenge and that's when I bought into it in like late June and I took it and the rest is history. So, yeah. Yeah, um, it's it's kind of the the story with 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 everybody. It's it's sort of like you know skeptical. Is this real? Is this possible? Can this work for me? Can I do this? You yeah. Know, can I? Am I like qualified? Do I have like the skills? Do I have like the confidence? What have you learned about yourself throughout this process? <sighs> that you can be. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to have any type of special skills. You don't have to, you don't have to be a qualified person. Like coming from like being somebody who grew up with the whole, like go to school, get a job, get a degree type of mindset or type of way of thinking, I guess. Um, I just thought that you have to be like a doctor or a lawyer to make crazy good money and, you know, work long hours. If you want to make the type of money that you can make being, an affiliate so it was just i don't know i guess i just learned that like you can there's so much more you can do online these days especially and as long as you have the drive and the motivation to do it 
There should be no reason why you can't learn the skills, why you can't implement everything you learn and why you can't start from the ground and from the ground up. So are you actually B19 pretty shocked at how much people are earning doing this? I yes. mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is like, bef when I found out about affiliate marketing, I was skeptical, like looking back, I was skeptical because it's not that I didn't believe it necessarily. It's that like, I didn't think I could do something like that, but I knew that people my age and people younger than me were making like thousands of dollars a day doing other things online, you know, whether it's affiliate marketing or, you know, drop shipping or whatever else. I knew that there were kids making so much money with social media and all that stuff. So it was like, I knew it's possible, but I just didn't think it was possible for me. Yeah. Um, so you're a young person in a world of, I mean, there is a lot of young YouTubers and young content creators, but I mean, I remember being 24 and feeling like I'm too young, like for any, like I'm, I don't, I'm not earning or like, I'm not going to earn people's respect or I don't have credibility or whatever. Well, what have, what have you learned about that? And how, how have you talked yourself through that? Obviously, you alluded to a little bit of it of, of over the last couple of minutes, but specifically speak to the young people and, and what do you think that they're thinking? What did you think about your credibility at first? Or have you at all questioned like, gosh, are people going to actually listen to me because I'm so young? Um, and, and what has happened? Have you been surprised by the response and your ability to be able to actually influence people? So yeah i go live regularly on tiktok and you know there's a ton of trolls that come in there all the time and like i've always I, i've had people tell me that like you know i'm too i've had people tell me that like i'm too young and why should they listen to me um and i have i don't even have a college degree like why am i even doing this and like um some people said that like they wouldn't trust a woman when it comes to money related things or career related things and i was like you know what late bye yeah i was like you know what <laughs> i'm i'm making a good amount of money doing something like this and you know what like fucking guys man <laughs> if you want to be closed-minded about it like i don't care like i i really do think that i'm to be doing, doing something like this even though i'm young i have learned a lot about like being young in this industry but people do listen to me and people there, you know, those people who really do care about what I have to say that like, they do take my advice. They do listen to what I have to say. Um, and they do see, like they see me and they think that they're capable of doing it, whether they're 19 years old or whether they're 40 or 50 or 60 years old. So that's all that really yeah. matters to me. Yeah. And the smart ones like our guests yesterday uh, will realize that young people really like have a lot, more of an understanding about how all this technology works that we're all using to drive traffic to our funnels yeah. and collect emails and build a list and and ultimately make money um you know uh have you ever heard me talk about the liking gap and like the phenomenon of how much you think how much you think people like you versus how much they actually do yeah. like you and how your perspective is always going to be much lower than the reality um, uh, what people are actually thinking or how much they actually enjoy being around you. So you're starting to go live, you said. So that means you're spending a bit more time with people and you're spending a bit more time talking about marketing. Um, what was your first live like and what are your lives like now? Oh my gosh, my first live, there was like one person in there, maybe most of the time. It was like, a, it was probably like a 40 minute long live. There was one person in there listening to me for maybe 20 minutes. The rest was just empty, negative space. And I was just talking to the camera. I was talking to myself, basically. Um, and I felt embarrassed. You know, I felt really discouraged. But I was like, I'm just going to keep going. Like, I'm just going to keep going, keep going live. Um, and, you know, eventually, like, the next time I went live, there were a few more people in there. And the next time I went live, there were, like, five or six. And, you know, now my live streams, I'm able to, you know, there's between maybe 30 and, like, 80 people in there at all times. And people are asking me questions. And 
I'm always able to be talking the whole time because, you know, people are asking me questions. So I'm just, I'm on like a roll on my live streams now. So, it, and it's just really like motivating and I love it. Yeah. Are you realizing that you can go where you're celebrated and not just where you're tolerated, you know, like yeah. you can act like, like, you know, friend circles or even in, in your classrooms or in your local town, it's not that people don't appreciate you, but they just, it's, they see you every day. You're not, yeah. you're just, okay. Hi, Sylvia. Nice to see you again. But it's like, and that's how it is for all of us. It's not just, it's not just you, but then you go online and you start talking, you know, some, some marketing sense, some yeah. make money or, you know, whatever your niche is, you start talking confidently. You can put a little bit of extra, you know, umph on it because you really can, you don't have to feel insecure. You're attracting people who have never seen you before. So they don't really have a prejudgment of you. And, and all of a sudden, if you keep doing this, yeah, I was amazed too. It's like, oh my gosh, I've got a group of 20 strangers online that are just sitting here at their houses, listening to me attentively. I don't think my kids have listened to me in two years, but you know, these 20 strangers, it's actually pretty empowering. Yeah, it is. If you keep doing it until because you'll start to believe new things about yourself instead of yeah. what kind of life, like, like sometimes it's, it's difficult not to either believe what friends and family say, talk about, say about us, just about their general vibes. Like we tend to be capped out at like, the the people around us but when we kind of get out and start talking listening to other people start talking some smack that we wouldn't normally talk around like our local friends and family because it would be awkward they would be like hey sylvia chill out you know but on the internet nobody can say that because they've never met you before so you can really make a new first impression every single day <laughs> And every day that you get more comfortable either creating content or going live, you'll get a little bit better. And each time there'll be a, a few more. Yeah. Not a lot more, but a few <laughs> more people probably listening. And before you know it, it won't feel like it's growing. But then one day you'll be like, damn, I got 100 people on my lives. Yeah. Have you noticed that? I don't feel like I'm growing thing, but I am actually yeah. improving and progressing. Yeah, that I was gonna say, um, when you're on live, like 30 people doesn't seem or feel like a lot of people, but when you realize like, wow, that's, if I was like standing in front of 30 people right now, like that would be a lot of people who really do care about what I have to say. Um, and yeah, as time did go on, like I totally seen a lot of growth and, I don't know it is really empowering because it, it like if I go and tell like tell my parents for example like what I'm doing they kind of look at me crazy they don't really get it but then when I, I think that's why I like going live so much because it feels like these people even if they're new or whatever they hear me out they get what I'm saying they care about what I have to say and it feels really just like yeah it just it just feels really empowering yeah. And look, this is how we use the internet and not let it use us. Whether you're using these strategies that we're talking about to build an affiliate marketing, uh, coaching courses or events business, you know, one of the core four models that we teach, or quite frankly, whether you're just using these strategies to find a new group of people to connect with in the world, this strategy works. Yeah. And it's, it's getting, it's, it's consuming content and being isolated and alone with your device does not empower you. It makes you feel alone and it wow. gets, that's why social media can be destructive is because it gets us into this comparison thing and all this. But when you're using technology to connect, right? When you're using technology to um, communicate, to promote, to share, to teach, 
Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, this becomes a tool for actual connection instead of just voyeurism, right? Which is what we were all doing before when we were just scrolling. And that's an isolated activity. We're just watching people lurking around. They don't know, right? So flip that around. Be yeah. the one who's talking in there and engages people. And, and so how do you engage people on your lives? What are some of the new things that you're doing now that you didn't do at the beginning? You know, for me, it's having guests on and, and learning how to ask the guest questions and actually do an interview and, and, and communicate two way instead of just talking, you know, just a monologue. So what are some of the things that are helpful that you've been doing on lives that you think make them better? Um, I always ask questions like to my audience, um, things like, you know, double tap the screen if you feel like you've just been living the same day over and over and over again, stuff like that. Or I'll spit out facts like this percent of companies have affiliate. How many of you knew that this percent percentage of companies have affiliate programs? And I'll tell people like put in the comments, you know, 80 percent or whatever. And I'll have people like engage and repeat what I'm saying so that it feels like they're sorry, the dogs are barking in the background. So that it feels like you know, they're engaged in listening to me and get what I'm saying or like, you know, I'll ask them, do you guys have any questions for me about this or that? And I just make sure that people are following along with me and understanding exactly what I'm saying so that they can obviously understand. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody put a comment down in this chat, say yeah. clear. If you just pick that yeah. up, just yeah. do it right now. So you all know. So everybody put a clear down in the chat if if that was clear what she was talking about. Just asking questions as you're talking. Just clear. Okay, Pet, thank you. Clear. Everybody's clear. Now, what this also does when you ask for comments like that on your lives, it gets a lot more comments buzzing in there, right? Because you have 30 people on the live and 30 people all say clear. Or 30 people, I'll type a one in the comment if you're excited to hear about what I have to say next. Yeah. Type one in the comment. I'm not even going forward until we get it, until we get 31, 30 people on here, right? You could even have fun with it and, and wow. sort of kind of, you know, kind of call people to action, like say, we're not going forward until, right? And, it, you know, you play around with it a little bit. See, we've got, we've, we just, we just, we just put up 50 more comments in this live right. just from that one ask than, than what was previously there. So that's, that's great. Are you using any props? Are you, do you turn your phone around and share your screen? Do you have a, a little thing. What else are you doing on your lives that are helpful? Yes. Yeah, so um, I have an ebook, like a little step-by-step -step guide. Um, like a guide to affiliate marketing. And I, I've been trying to show it more recent, like more lately go through my ebook on my live streams and just like, you know, I have definitions in there. I have like, you know, the meaning of a sales funnel and an autoresponder. And I try to explain these things to people. I have like facts in there. Um, I have like frequently asked questions in my ebook. So I go over those because I know a lot of people have those questions. So yeah, I go over those. Um, I'll show examples of other oh, people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanna, I wanna just, I wanna make sure I understood that. So you have an ebook, yeah. and you'll just, you'll just flip your phone around yeah. and just go through your own ebook yeah. that has this information in it, and then come. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm feeling a big old boulder getting dropped right here. Now, though, let's not just. Breeze, that was that is clever because now you're creating desire that they're gonna say, "Can I have a copy of this?" That's that's right, exactly, folks. See, it that's pays right. to be on wake. Sylvia, yeah. that was bold. That was a boulder. Now, it, thank you for that. That was really. That's really powerful i mean because you're sitting here you're you have limitations if you're going live for example on tiktok or if you're going live over on instagram or whatever you're on your phone okay so you have a couple of different choices right you can basically put your phone on an ipad or a, like a tripod now, right now i have my my phone on just like this this like little watch stand right here but 
um, you know, you could have a now. My setups have always been janky. Okay, so it's not like, I mean, I'm the king of buying nice equipment, but then never yeah. using it. Always going back to the simple solution. Okay, so you, the other thing you could have your phone up on a now. If you're showing the ebook on your computer, you got to obviously pick the phone up and flip it around, hold it, and go over these pieces as like kind of with your finger, right? You like you're pointing. You're saying, "Hey, here's Silvio. Hey, here's this other guy over here. He looks weird." Um, but the other thing you could do is you could have your phone up on a like a little kind of tripod yeah. and things are very cheap to buy on Amazon and you could have, I've always liked this. I'm going to always keep talking about this folks. And I know it's not the greatest technology and it's not the highest of, you know, the production. I like to have a little flip chart. I've always had like a little whiteboard and I'll just draw stuff on the, what that is so engaging for whatever yeah. reason. And I'm just, anytime there's a prop, it is helpful. And I love your prop idea that you just gave, which yeah. is she has an ebook and she goes through what's in the dang ebook. Yeah. And not only does that give you a structure to talk throughout your life, but it also creates desire for people to want to get that dang a copy for themselves. And you just tell them to go opt in. Right. Yeah. At the end of my, at the end of like, when I'm done going through my ebook, I'm like, y'all can get a copy of this. Go to the link in my profile. All you have to do is put in your name and email and you'll get sent my free ebook in your email, in your yeah. inbox within 15 minutes. Simple as that. Natural. That's so natural. And that's where we need to be when we're marketing these days is try to be as yeah. natural. That is so natural. It feels organic. It doesn't feel like pushy. And you're delivering value up front. You're showing them the dang thing. You're not like, it's not a like, hey, there's something cool behind door three. You know, just, you know, you know, like I think people feel like that with a lot of opt-in pages. They're yeah. like, my email address is not like, it's not like my credit card number, but it is the dang, it is my email address, yeah. right? I don't want to be like spammed or people might think that like they can get hacked or something or whatever. So they, they want to see some value before they turn over that email address. So mm -hmm. I love that. So exactly. You're about to talk about something else. Sometimes you'll go through and show some examples of some, like some other funnels and stuff. Is, is that what you do as well? I was going to say, I show examples of like different people marketing different products in different ways because people ask me like, can you do this without showing your face? Can you do this without talking or whatever? So I show examples of people promoting physical products without showing their face or talking. I show examples of people um, promoting digital products without showing their face or talking. And then I show people promoting physical and digital products, talking, showing their face, you know, this or that. So um, cause people always ask me, how can I promote this or how, how can you promote without showing your face, stuff like that. So I always show examples of other people doing it. Um, cause you know, the way I do it, I show my face, I talk and all that stuff. You don't have to do it that way though. So I show the different ways you can do it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. This is so good. This is so good. And, and you're getting better, right? You're feeling more yeah. As you go and you're in your, uh, is that, you know, everybody feels like just like you did on that first live or two or three or four or five. And I did, felt the same way. Nobody shows up. You feel like a goofball and, and you just, you just stop right there. But what you're telling us is you've, you're, it gets better. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what, what else have you done that um, has worked or is exciting for you or, or would be valuable to share with people? What else have you learned along your content marketing creation journey here? This is the biggest thing that I always try to tell people on my live streams. Trying to go viral all the time is not going to convert the way people think it'll convert. Like just because you reach tens of thousands of people does not mean you're reaching the right people who will really want to go and buy the products you're talking about. I learned that the hard way. Like it took me months before I decided to start storytelling instead of just trying to do that, you know, that 
having that copycat syndrome of doing the same thing that all the other people are doing and their videos are going viral or whatever. That's what I was doing. And that's what I was trying to do, but I wasn't converting. Um, people weren't even like opting into my email list. So I was like, obviously this is not working. I need to do something different. What is something that can make me more in, in tune with my audience? What is something that could make people trust me more and what makes, what's going to make me stand out from the crowd and what's going to make me different. That's when I switched over to storytelling, telling people my story. You know, I, I recommend this training course as one of the products I promote. So I'm like telling people why I got into affiliate marketing, why I started learning how to make money online, why other people should start learning how to make money online. And I just started talking about the struggles I had and like how I was so burnt out from my job. And I felt like I had lost my purpose and all this stuff. That's when I went from making one commission every four weeks to making several a day. So I think that's very important because a lot of people think you need to go viral and have all these eyeballs on your videos. No, if you target, if you are making very specific content that's targeting a very specific person, that person is gonna feel like, oh, like that's me. Like I see myself in this person. Now I can trust them a little more. Maybe I should look into what they're talking about because if they did it with these circumstances, maybe I can too. That's like the biggest takeaway I've learned from this whole experience. Yeah, that's that's huge. And it's it's appreciating base hits and bunts and not always going for the grand slam. And a lot of times we're going for a grand slam home run and there's nobody even on base. A grand slam yeah. means that on every base and you get four runs from it. I mean, sure, a home run's nice, but remember a home run is still only one run if there's nobody else on base, right? I'm talking baseball now. So in many respects, you know, that's obviously not realistic to expect every time. So we got to get great and appreciate base hits. And a, a good solid video, what are some of the things, how do you, how would you, you know, if you if you post a video and it 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 gets sort of you know less views than your average video gets how do you still stay positive in looking like like it's like glass half full perspective like mm -hmm. how do you not get frustrated and disappointed if it doesn't live up to the expectations that you had for it how do you adjust your expectations you know because i think some of us put so much um emphasis on like okay i got my funnel done and then it's like okay nothing actually happens once you got your funnel done because it's now just a funnel that's sitting there and people have to find it you know you have to drive people to it okay i posted my first video shit you know nothing's happening yeah. How you know, how do you, okay, I just posted my hundredth video. I mean, this is my 700th uh, uh, interview. You know, we've done nearly 700 or more than 700 at this point. And it's like, how, how do you, how have you shifted your perspective? I guess it's talk more about that going viral. W were you expecting every video to go viral? And, and was it like this kind of like every single time you did something, you were putting a lot of energy into it and then getting disappointed that it wasn't going viral? Like say more about how you shifted your mindset to, to in, in, I guess, what are you focused on now? Like when you like not only telling more stories in your videos, but talk to us about how that evolved more into how you view everything that you do, every piece of content that you make now versus before. Yeah. So I was do, I was recreating all those viral videos that other affiliates were making. And I got so frustrated every time a video wouldn't go viral. I was like, why is it working for them? And it's not working for me. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I kind of just accepted it. And I accepted the fact that this is a learning process. And if something is not working, you just have to go and try something different. I know people like people have come to me and they're like, I've been doing this for six months and you know, nothing's happened, whatever. And you know, I go look at their account and they've been like doing the same thing over and over, and over again. They didn't, they didn't change their like content strategy. They haven't, they haven't started putting text on the screen. Their, the captions are all the same. Like they're recreating the same video over and over and over again. Like they're not trying something different. If something's not working, you have to try something different. So 
then I was like, I was like, basically when I, when my mindset kind of shifted, um, to start doing more storytelling and stuff, I started thinking about like, okay, go back to like, if I went back to when I first found out about the challenge and when I first found out about all this, am I going to trust a person who has this viral video, you know, and they're just talking about how you can make all this money, blah, blah, blah. Or am I going to trust someone who seems to have endured all these different struggles and stuff and like someone I could be relating to and someone who seems to understand what I'm going through? Who am I going to trust more despite how many followers they have, despite, you know, whether or not I've ever clicked on their sales funnel? Like, who is the person I'm going to trust more? And that person is going to be the person, you know, who's talking about their struggles and stuff like that. So I was like, I should start putting out content that you know, maybe I would be more inclined to convert into one of another person's like right. inclined to convert for another person. So I, that's when I started storytelling and telling my story and stuff like that. This is, this is what she's talking about. I experienced the same thing. And what you're talking about is in every story, when she says using storytelling, I'm assuming that you mean including good and bad parts of things, yes. right? Because every great story, the majority of the movie, the majority of the, the story is struggle. Yeah, it is the dude or the the person who is the main character, the hero, walking through some long desert, walking through some zombie apocalypse. You know, trying to find and in you know the end of the movie, basically, which is where something somebody's going to die or somebody's going to live happily ever after. That's how yeah. every story ends, and. I think we have a tendency to want to get on the internet and start marketing. And this is personality driven. Like if you're putting your face, everything's personality driven and everything's story driven, whether you want it to be or not. Right. Because people, if you don't tell them your story, they're going to wonder what your story is. They're going to wonder why you're doing what you're doing. They're going to wonder yeah. why you made that video and they're going to make up their own conclusions yeah. Yeah. and that's where the scammer you're uh this is uh when people don't feel like they understand you or what's going on they attach their own labels to it yeah. so when you tell the story you control the narrative not the yeah. audience and that's that's what every performance, that's what every movie, that's what every song, that's what every book is. The 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 storyteller, the musician, the artist, the reader controls the audience, not the audience controlling the reader. So we have to, if we want to connect and we want to really, you know have some heart and soul. I was listening to Casey Neistat, who's one of the first YouTubers. I was listening to a podcast that he just did. Um, and he was one of the first YouTubers. And he went to, on one of his recent videos, he went to chat GPT to have Google, have the AI, not Google, have the AI write him a video script. He said, write a Casey Neistat video script. And he just, it wrote it out and he followed it to a T. And everybody was like, you could have made that so much better if you would have gave better prompts and followed up with more questions. And he said, that wasn't the point of the video. The point of the video was just to ask it one question and have it spit back and, yeah. and prove that AI can't insert heart and soul into yeah. your video. Yep. And heart and soul comes from hearing people's struggles. It comes from hearing everything that they either have overcome or are currently overcoming. You can still root for a character in a movie right in the middle of the movie as they're going through the shit. Yeah. You know, we don't wait until the we don't judge people and say, oh, he's. He's going through something right now, right? We're fight. We're we're rooting for them. 
we're hoping that they, if we're watching a movie, right, or listening to a story, and then at the end, we're either disappointed that it didn't happen for them and they died, or we're happy that they achieved yeah. and became the hero. And so that that's what's coming up for me as I hear you keep going back to this storytelling piece, because when you're just recreating or copycatting or you know, just going off of a general script and never inserting any of your own heart and soul into the video. It's exactly what Casey was talking about. It's, it's not, it's not gonna connect and you're yeah. gonna be frustrated and you're gonna wonder why people are, are not feeling connected to the content. Um, what's coming up for you as I sort of, you know, say more about what what you were initially saying because i've gone through this whole journey and i've used story my whole career and i'm still doing it today on this show by at the questions that i ask are not all about your success because everybody listening can't relate to that yeah. everybody listening can relate to your struggle so that's why i do that even on this show it's because it's more relatable content yeah. when you talk about all the sh the stuff in the struggles um, because people feel more seen and understood like yeah. they're not alone. And they also feel like it's more realistic. It doesn't sound too good to be true because you're acknowledging all aspects of what you're yeah. talking about or the, or the process. Does, right. Yeah, for sure. I was going to say, um, I was going to say two things. One, when you talk, to about like people just labeling you if you don't answer those questions of like why you're doing this and stuff like that. Um, you have to, I was gonna say you have to be able to answer those questions before people can even ask you them. Um, like I always start out all like my lives in particular. I always start out my lives by sharing my story right off the bat, talking about my struggles, why I started doing this, why I'm even sitting up here on live stream, what benefits I'm getting out of going live. I answer those questions right off the bat. So people can't, you know, assume things or this and that. The second thing I was going to say, it's actually funny that you brought up that Casey Neistat thing, because I had someone email me the other day and they were like, you know, why should I take the challenge when I could just use AI and chat GBT to set up my whole business for me? And the point you made was that chat GBT or AI or whatever, there's they don't, those things don't have any emotion in them. Go ahead and set up your business with AI and chat GBT, but you're not going to build those connections with people on the other end of the screen because the people on the other end of your screen are looking at a robot. So, and listening to a robot, they're not going to be able to build that connection. So that's a huge difference between using just AI to set up your business and do it for you versus you actually going out there and putting yourself out there and building that com connection and relationship with someone else. And that's a part of what the challenge teaches is like, you know, they talk to you about like being, your it talks to you about being your authentic self and like stuff like that. So I think that's very, very important that people understand is like, yeah, we have the internet, we have the AI and chat GPT. It's great, but those things can't empathize with people. Those things can just spew out information, but they're not going to empathize with the person on the other end of the screen. And that's kind of what those copycat videos feel like. It kind of feels like this auto-generated, like replayed video that you've seen over and over and over again. Like it's just, it doesn't translate. It doesn't hit any like pain points for me. Like it's just kind of, I don't feel anything watching those types of videos. So like, you know, for other people it is working, but like for some people like me, it wouldn't. So like, I try to not put out content like that as much. And there's ways that you can do that and make it more relatable and real. Yeah. It's like the people who are doing that successfully are doing it while also showing their everyday normal life. Yeah. Yeah. We have some, some, some people in this community even who do a lot of those kind of videos. And while they're doing them, they're holding their babies. They're yeah. sitting in a messy room. Yeah. Or, you yeah. know, they're, they're, they've got a, um, they're, they're at their job or, or they're in their classroom yeah. uh, for a school teacher. They're in their classroom. So there's, con there's story, there's story there. They're yeah. a little 
or advance some of these content creators and marketers inside of our community because they've been doing it for longer. You yeah. do this every day for six, nine, 12 months, and you, you'll you find what fits for you. Uh, what I'm taking away, Sylvia, from what you're talking about is, is that you are finding what's working for you in one size doesn't fit all. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's, a, that's an important thing for us to hear every single day. Um, what could we wrap up on? Mindset tip. I mean, anything else that has been helpful for you to, you know, b b be aware of, to, to, that you've learned about yourself, that you've, that something that you've realized that you need in order to, to do this successfully, that you've developed the difference between being an employee and an entrepreneur. Give us something else that you've that you've discovered in this journey. That's how long have you been doing this? Also, by the way, um, I've been posting since September of 2022. Okay, so six, a little over six months. Yeah. What's what's what what have you and did you was there some delay between when you kind of started taking the challenge and started getting? Was there any you know? Was there any? Was there anything you would do different if you looked back at kind of how you got started? Oh gosh, I don't do you know. Feel like thing was was happened as the way it was supposed to happen, and people need to trust the process more. Yeah, I don't know because I hate to say that I regret anything. I don't regret anything. Like I wouldn't necessarily do anything different because had I like had everything been done perfectly the first time around and stuff, I wouldn't have learned anything. Um, like for those of you who don't know, I didn't buy the blueprints. Like I didn't buy legendary's blueprints right away. I couldn't afford them. Like I had no choice. I do do without, um, mindset is like this whole idea. Like this whole thing is like 80% mindset. If you can't grasp the fact that this is something that takes time and consistent effort and dedication, it's going to be really hard for you to succeed. But at the end of the day, what really helped me get there was just remembering my why, remembering why I even got into this in the first place. If your why is not good enough, you know, that's also going to be tough for you to get through this. You have to have a good enough why. It can't just be you want more money. Why do you want more money? Why do you want more time? Why do you want more freedom? Well, how is that going to help you in the future? And, you know, like people have people message me like I'm doing this and it's really hard and stuff like that. And I tell them, I know, I know it's hard. But remember why you started doing something like this, because it's not going to be easy. But think about like your end goal and think about how the hard work is going to pay off at the end, because like at the end of the day, you can choose your heart, whether your heart is being broke and being burnt out at your job and hating your boss and whatever and missing out on spending time with your kids or whatever it is. Or you could choose the heart of building a business and trying to scale, but then reaping the results at the end of that journey. Yeah. So you yeah. can choose you can choose what hard you want to go with. You know, I chose the heart of building a business and reaping the results after. So, you know, with limited resources, I mean, yes. with limited resources and you didn't let that stop you, you know, um, there's a lot of people who have the resources and, and, and won't invest in themselves to, yeah. it, it's like, you know, we're all, we all have different choices and, but we all still have choices and it's yeah. like, you know, you have to do what you can with what you have in that moment. Make do with what you got. And if, you know, you're in a situation where you have no money, but you have time and energy, well, you're going to have to crank that up. You're going to have to do a little more digging and searching and, and, and learning and figuring things out and all of that. If you have, you know, you have some resources, you have savings, you have credit. You yeah. have, you know, resources, but you have limited time. Then the, in, in the entrepreneur world, we call this ding, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Like buy your way, yes. buy speed, you know, buy speed. It's like for me, I, I um, when I bought, uh, we've done this several times. I've got lots of examples, but it's like I bought a new boat last year, I think. And I hired the 
apted, man, to come out and just teach me now. Like, I don't want to figure this out over the next six to nine months. Like, and I can afford it, right? I've got the money to be able to buy the speed. Um, if I didn't, and I was 19, and I was like, but I really want a boat. Okay, um, canoe, John boat, figure it out. That's pretty much right. where I'm at. Figure it out, right. Oh, right. right. So it's like, okay, I got more time than I got money. I can't even afford a boat. So let me just get in where I fit in, right? Yeah. But if you ha if you ha if you want speed and you have the money and you don't spend it, then you're putting more emphasis in and you're putting more value on money than it deserves because the skills and the speed of implementation, especially for a lot of you who have families, kids, other jobs, et cetera, um, you know, we all have to make do with the resources that we got and then and then either um, and we pay the either positive or negative consequences. I, I love that. It's very true. And I've been on all sides of that. Um, Sylvia, it's it's um, it's really inspirational. We have people of all ages. It's been a while since we've had somebody under 20 that I can remember on the show. So it's been super cool to chat with you. And um, we've got your hustle with Sylvia link for TikTok and Instagram up so people can connect with you and follow you and learn from you and and support you and and kind of be a part of your network and circle and come back and see me and and let's uh let's keep the conversation going okay sure. thank you for having me i really appreciate it i loved being on the show you're so welcome thanks for coming all right my friends another one another one in the books another one in the books it just keeps getting better i mean it keeps it keeps getting more real um, and our, uh, you know, the different people that we have on the show keep getting more interesting. Uh, so, um, come back and join us again tomorrow for another episode. As you know, we go live five days a week. Um, and we have lots going on inside of our virtual classrooms here at Legendary. Of course, Wake Up Legendary is free to you every single day. Um, even as a member of Legendary, I mean, you have don't even have to take the challenge, I guess, to kind of creep on here. Um, we encourage you to, so you know, you know what we're talking about, though. At the very least, get into the blueprints if you can. If you want to go faster, if you have the resources to for more accountability and more information, uh, more coaching, uh, and and um, you know, for example. Uh, ways in which you can use artificial intelligence to enhance your business, not to make your business fail like so many people are using it right now. Got to know how to use the tools, sort of like my dad always said, you know, I mean, the tool will make or break you if you know how to use it. If you don't, it's just wasted money that, you know, uh, you know, rust out in your toolbox. So know how to use the tools, learn how to use the tools. If you don't want to learn them here, go learn them somewhere else. I encourage you to learn them because you're going to need them over the next decade. I promise you. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Get out of here. Peace.